<laughs> it's so awkward introducing yourself. It is. <laughs> my name's Erin. This is my YouTube channel that I just started. I go by the name Irritable Bee Syndrome because I have irritable bowels and I'm also a bee. This is part of our new series that we coined. In this, a <laughs> nobody else is doing this. Yeah, this is original thoughts only. Um, it's called English Majors React. You That's should check us. check out Avery's channel. We just made a video about milk and honey. Um, it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> it was a trip. Didn't, we didn't really go anywhere. I'm gonna I be know. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Stick in the whole realm of Insta poetry and the commodification of poetry. We're gonna talk about our favorite person and her favorite book, <laughs> Adult Adolescence by Gabby Hanna. Queen. The Renaissance woman. <laughs> Till today, I had seen the one video of her like 21 pilots rapping um, on her video, whatever, about her poems, I don't know. Um, which was really not good, uh, but. That's neither that here nor so. there. <laughs> we also just got finished um, watching her video about, uh, about her own poetry book, explaining it and defending it, so. Yeah, so we're all a little riled up over here. But she also said she welcomes criticism, so... I don't think that's true, because she gets really upset if people criticize her. But at the same time, I don't think it's criticism. It's just what we do in a writing workshop. That's exactly it. We critique, we read, we, we analyze. We offer suggestions. We try to make it better. We tell you how it will most likely be received by other readers. We're because, doing you a favor. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, when you read your own writing, you're gonna see it completely different than how other people will. With the um, Milk and Honey one, we kind of went in blind with it. So you hadn't really read a lot of it, and I hadn't really read a lot of it. I read enough. Okay, and so we went in blind. But you've read this. I uh, pretty much have read it, except for the last maybe 30 pages I gave up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's a long book. I mean, it's really long. I don't know if you can tell. I for a I've marked collection? it, and as you can tell, all my little blue ones, and that means that it should have been a tweet <laughs> instead of a poem. It was a tweet, and then I ran out of blue sticky notes, so I just kinda, <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of kept going. Do you have some favorites? Um, no, but <laughs> there are some that I marked. Keeping in mind, first person she attributes this book to is Shane Dawson. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> ah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Wow. That's a big Woo! yikes. <laughs> well, it's, it is supposed to be children's poetry, right? So. Apparently, she says it's inspired by Bo Burnham and Shel Silverstein, which I didn't get at all when I read it. Um, how fucking disrespectful to Shel Sil I'm sorry, how, how dare you? <laughs> Drag his name through the mud like that. The man is dead, he cannot defend himself. So basically this book is um, many short poems with little drawings. You know, a la Milk and Honey, a la maybe Shel Silverstein, but not really. I'm gonna start with this one. It's, on, it's the second poem in the whole book. It's on page two if you wanna follow along. Um, it's called Sleep. I like sleep. Sleep is neat. If you're having trouble, count some sheep. I like sleep. Sleep is sweet. Best of all, sleep is cheap. When I sleep, I can dream of cherry pie and Boston cream. When I sleep, I don't have to blink. No, I don't have to think. Excuse me. That's why I love my eight hour blink. I only wake up to eat or pee. Otherwise, I'd sleep for eternity. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is a child, this is a children's poem, but it wasn't marketed as such, correct? No, no. She, what she says in her video is that she's trying to portray adult ideas through the lens of a child. Which is an interesting concept, not a new concept. No. It's been done well by other people. So if that's the if that's the idea and that's the what she wanted to get across, maybe get it across. It, like that is so not clear here. It just sounds like she's 
she's just talking about sleep in a sing-songy voice. The rhymes aren't even that good. It's A, B, A, B, C, C, D, D, E, E. In my opinion, there isn't any intention behind the rhyme scheme besides no. that it rhymes. Like, this book is not marketed, as I kind of said, like, as a children's collection at all. Whereas, like, if you're going to compare yourself to what? Shel Silverstein, who writes exclusively children's poetry and children's literature. It's marketed to children. It always has been, and it was throughout his career. Um, or if you want to compare yourself to Bo Burnham, who is outwardly, like, an adult comedian. Like, he writes jokes that are very, like edgy and and for adults right and she's towing the line of course she calls her book adult adolescence but she has to explain between being an adult and an adolescent it just comes off as like a, trying to be clever like that doesn't give me the right. idea what it's gonna be it yeah. doesn't and it just seems like there isn't really any direction no here um i guess we could look at another one yeah so i think my overall uh critique on that one is that 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 poem didn't have to be written and it didn't <laughs> <laughs> it didn't like it doesn't present any new ideas it doesn't give me anything like okay you like to it sleep it gives no a fucking... cheap rhyme scheme yeah that can only work if it has the right intention whereas i think she had zero intention she just wanted it to sound cute and rhymy Next! <laughs> okay um oh here's one that i marked oh my favorite. in my notes that it should have been a tweet. I don't know if you can see that. I've seen it. I said Twitter. tweet. Um, it's called Relative. You want to read it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to read this one. <laughs> Time is relative. Beauty is relative. Family is relatives. And it's in this weird... Oh. And it's in, a, in one of those This patterns, weird, like, arbitrary line break. That a lot of poets do when they don't know what else to do. Mm. Um, so I think... My biggest, so I read this on Twitter, like this was in one of those like tweets like Gabby Hanna really thinks she did something with this poem or something <laughs> like that, which I think she did think that she did something with it. But um, the, my biggest critique about this is that the grammar family is relatives. That is such improper grammar. Isn't it, shouldn't it be family or relatives? Yeah, but the tweet. I know, I know, but like, and I guess she's trying to do the is time, is relative, family, is relative, I get that, but like, if it doesn't even make sense grammatically, it sh it's not gonna make sense, like it doesn't, I don't know. This is actually one that I wanted to talk about, I marked it. Um, it's called Iron. When I was young, my mom used to check if the iron was hot by touching it, and I don't know, I just feel like there's a metaphor in there somewhere. Okay, so what's the metaphor? Right. I say my notes, I said, find it. <laughs> because in my it? mind, that's an interesting concept. Honestly, like someone tr touching an iron to see if it's hot. You know, like that's kind of interesting. That's a cool character trait. Isn't that, that a metaphor? Like, I think like touching a stove or like. I think that is a metaphor. Like touching an iron to see if it's hot. That could be a metaphor in itself. There's a, I don't. The thing is, it's like. There's this idea that you show and don't tell. Yes. That right? is like one of the basic rules in like 101 creative writing class. So you're trying yeah. to show what you're trying to say with like images or ideas or scenes or whatever without specifically saying what you're trying to say. This doesn't even, <laughs> this doesn't even do. Either of them, really. It does a little bit of showing and then the opposite of telling, which is basically telling you to figure it out. It's like, I don't, when I read a poem, I don't want to feel like I have to fill in blanks because there's something missing that makes the poem abs like not make sense. A good poem will leave you with something, leave you wondering, but more of like wondering introspectively, not wondering about the actual poem itself. If you're confused about a poem itself, because like, think about, like a poem shouldn't like directly tell you to think about something. It should make you think. But it's it like someone. she's trying to be self-aware in like almost an Ars Poetica kind of way, like yeah. writing about poetry, but she doesn't have that understanding or background of how that works. Do you know what I'm saying? So she was a Vine a star. A Vine star. And comedy. a YouTuber. A YouTuber. Yeah. A singer. Yeah. Now a poet. Yes. 
You can't be all of them. You cannot have it all. There's a reason why Selena Gomez is a bad singer and a good actor. Like, you can't have both. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, the thing is, is like, poetry does not exist in a vacuum. You yeah. can't pick it up right away and just write a poem without understanding why you're doing what you're doing and where this comes from. Yeah. My theory is that she did not intend to write this as like a child viewing things through an adult lens or whatever it was. Um, I think that she got so much backlash from how childlike her poetry was that she decided to create this narrative after the fact to defend herself as a good poet. Because had that been the original intention, I feel like, and maybe I'm just giving her too much credit, I feel like she would have done something different. I don't know. It's, That's my opinion. <laughs> it, in, my, in my opinion, there's no clear intention throughout the whole thing at all. Yeah. Um, and it's certainly not what she said it was, which is a child experiencing things. I don't even remember what she said. She was like, uh, like it, adult mature experiences told from a child's point of view or something like right, that. Right, that's not this at that's all. That's not. I it's don't not this that. at all. It's it's basically the perspective of an adult baby. <laughs> so Gabby had them. <laughs> but like she should have just said it instead of trying to like make this pseudo intellectual statement about it that like yeah. has no ground. No new ideas are here. I'm not learning about the writer, really? Or, I mean, excuse me, I'm not learning about the speaker. There's a difference between the author and the speaker. Yes. In most cases. We don't have a clear uh, differentiation. Differenti yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because we don't know which is which here. She starts the book by saying, um, it's a poem titled Unexpected, and it says, point blank, it's a YouTuber book. So, that makes me not want to, like... Read it? It makes me not want to read it. It makes me <laughs> not want to take it seriously, and it blurs the lines again between the speaker and who's writing it exactly which is not good writing so um oh there's a poem called lotion yeah let's read it the, <laughs> page 30 Ew, okay it's called lotion have you ever received a gift that was placed inside of a box that was recycled from another much more intriguing present sorry line breaks that has confused me like, you pull back the pretty paper and you see the iPad packaging, but then you open the lid and inside is a lotion set? I meet a lot of people like that. Exciting outside, disappointing inside. Don't be lotion. Whoa. Wait, that's kind of offensive. I would love a lotion set. Sorry we can't all be fucking rich, Gabby Hannah. That, I definitely did think that. I was like, they just need to use a box. Like, <laughs> wow, maybe... Wow, maybe they bought the iPad for themselves and they didn't have enough money left over, so they had to give you the fucking lotion set. This is another case of introducing a concept or an image, a little bit of a scene. It's you opening a present and you open the box, you think it's gonna be an iPad and it's not. And then telling you exactly what to do with that information. It's a weak tactic. It is, it's weak. I even wrote that, weak. Oh my God, hey, I didn't even see that you wrote that. <laughs> well, weak. also like, I also personally think that it's kind of, not amateur, I feel like that has negative connotation, but a beginner thing to like open a poem with a question. Cause they always tell you not to do that on essays in high school and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like don't start with a question. Don't start a sentence with because. It's just kind of like one of those things. But I don't know, like that's a very specific situation. I mean, personally, I'm never really disappointed by gifts. Maybe I just don't relate to it, but like, I don't, it's taking the situation that's not necessarily universally relatable of like expecting a gift to be more and expensive iPad. than what it was and then applying that to like a generalization of people. And like, I get what the, I get what she's referring to. Like people who are really hot on the outside, but like dumb as fuck on the inside. But like, don't be lotion. Like, I, I don't know. Ugh. I'm not crazy about the concept. Not crazy about the execution. I think it was cheap. Also, like, how are you gonna ex tell someone not to be lotion? Like, don't be pretty on the outside and not interesting on the and inside. And there's so many connotations. Like, lotion can mean so many things. Moisturizing, soft, 
can be expensive too. Oh, uh, I don't they're know. Were, yeah. It was actually, um, not controversy, but I was watching another YouTuber. Her name's Rachel Oates. Do you watch her? Mm -mm. She does lit stuff. She does commentary stuff. She does a bunch of stuff. But, um, she specifically commented on this one poem, and it's called Cut. Mm. Her hand trembled around the sharp, cold metal as she looked at her distorted face in the mirror. Just do it, she told her reflection. Don't do it, her reflection replied. Come on, pussy, she shouted at the glass. You're going to regret this, you always do, the glass warned back. No one gives a shit if, if I do it, she reminded them both. This is a permanent decision based on temporary emotion, the mirror pleaded. Hair grows back, dumbass. Snip. That was just straight up offensive. Like, I, I, I'm like straight up kind of offended by that. I don't know if you feel the same way. I do. I feel like that's just because it's it's so obvious what she's trying to do. Yeah. She's trying to lead you in one direction, then all then at the very Being end switch switch, which is I feel like she's kind of trivializing self harm. She's using it. She's playing with it as like a literary tool instead of what it actually is. Also, where's the trigger warning for that? I'm sorry. Like, I'm that's... sorry I didn't give one to you. Right, because, no, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's fine. I'm sorry, everybody. No, it's okay. No, I'm, so, no, I'm fine. But, like, the fact that there is it's none. Like in the like, middle of, really... It's like in the middle of the book. We don't really, it's on page 61, and we really don't see stuff like that until this page, and it's kind of... I'm sorry, that's not told through a child's lens either. No, it's not. Well, okay, the thing is, like, that could be super real for some people like I get the thing about like cutting your hair and how that's like whatever but that 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 ending doesn't match the one line where it's like this is a permanent solution to a temporary problem first of all it's not because that's hair fucking grows back and switch cheap it's very cheap like you can't you're gonna use that she used that line to obviously to bait you into one direction and to and she also which I think is wrong she evokes such a visceral feeling talking about the sharp cold metal at the beginning that can be like super triggering for somebody yes. who has struggled with self-harm which is what she's talking about and i'm not saying that maybe maybe she has in the past which i mean okay but think about like you would then you should know that that's not cool like that's bad i can't believe she actually put i know it yeah that I'm one's sorry. really that was one of my marked ones what is the yellow sticky note it doesn't mean anything <laughs> The blue is just the blue is just tweets. Which are a lot of instances where we have these little, um, you can see, it's these little conversations between yeah. like two drawings. So without the drawings, this poem shouldn't even exist at all. <laughs> and then without the poem, the drawings mean nothing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So she's trying to say that. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I mean they're okay together. But it doesn't really do anything. Okay, wait, read. Okay, so the guy says, please, babe, I can't live without you, babe. And then the girl says, I know, babe, but I wish you'd drop dead, babe. And it's like a drawing. That would be on like a t shirt. That sounds like, it looks like, <laughs> that sounds like it would That's be like even a. even worse than a tweet. Like a trendy t shirt. Yeah. We're back. Thank God. <laughs> it's been <laughs> hours. <laughs> I wish she would recognize this, and I don't know if she has, if she has somebody respond with the link. Um, I wish she would recognize how privileged she is to have already been famous before she put this book out. Like, it takes some people their entire lifetime, and some people, again, will never experience this, to get a book deal. Like, let alone for it to be, like, successful and to earn money off of it. Most people won't earn a livable wage off of a book deal. And the fact that, I wish she would have recognized and fully acknowledged the fact that the reason she got a book deal was because she was famous and Simon and & Schuster wanted to make money and knew that they could offer her. And not because it's good poetry. Not because it's good. Like, they offered her a book deal. Okay, so something she said in the video um, that we watched earlier. I'll link it in the descript. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the watch, let me tell you. Um, provides a lot of context. Um, so she has a new book coming out in October called Dandelion, which she said will be obvious why she titled, it'll be obvious why she titled it Dandelion in the future. It's a mystery. When you read it. But she made it, she said that Simon & Schuster offered her a book deal before she even gave them a trip. Before she, she gave them a trip. Ma manuscripts is what Man I was trying to say. Manuscript, yeah. yeah. This, she, is, this is like Lena Dunham 
and oh girls. Oh my god. <laughs> that's exactly what it, it is. is. <laughs> it's like, you don't, she, does she realize that that's not how it works? Like that's not how people, normal people, normal writers who does honestly deserve it way more than she does. This, what they have to go through to get book deals. Like, she won't ever understand that. And she won't acknowledge it because she's and too proud of herself. And that's why she thinks that her stuff is so good. Because she never had to experience the rejection, the yeah. workshopping, the critiques, everything um, yes. that goes into being a, a good writer. She and just... You can't respond with anger. Like... If someone's critiquing your, yeah. your work. Can you imagine if... Because, like, we're, not, have, we're yeah. not saying, like, I hate Gabby Hanna. <laughs> no. Like, whatever, not at all. I don't like her work, and I think she didn't put... She hasn't put in the work necessary to make a book. Like, it, it is so obviously not there. She herself said it was rushed. She did. She actually did in that video. And I know what my work is like when I rush it. It's trash. Yeah, mine is so <laughs> bad. But this... It sounds like we're being harsh, and I get that, but I think that this is just honest. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, it kind of feels like she's stepping on people's toes. It's a reality check. Yeah, and she's probably not going to watch this. No, well, well she, she, might. she might. She might. She probably... She probably does. <laughs> she probably will watch it. Um, let's read a couple more, and then I think I'm done. Okay. Never mind. Cut! Cut it out! <laughs> <laughs> It out, as they say in <laughs> okay, Full Joey. House. <laughs> From Full House. Oh my god. I would not let like this random man live in my house with my kids. We're talking about Joey from Full House. Okay, well he was, no, he was the wife's brother. No, that's Uncle Jesse. Oh, really? That yeah. was Joey. Joey was uh, Danny's childhood friend. Oh, so I hate it. It's so wrong. We should have a Full House series. <gasps> yes. I've seen all of them. I've Me seen too. I had the episodes. whole box set. Let's do two more short ones. Two more short ones. This one's called Dreams, and it has a little, uh, who cares? It has a little <laughs> doodle. It's the second time she's done that. Yeah. It's kind of like sleep. Yeah, a little doodle. It looks like it's supposed to be her and like a thought bubble. It's called Dreams. My therapist tells me what my dreams mean, and I believe him. The way you believe your teacher when he tells you what a poem means. What? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Wait, okay. My therapist tells me what my dreams mean, and I believe him. The way you believe your teacher when he tells you what a poem means. So she just saying she believes her therapist because he studies stuff like that, same way she believes a teacher who studies literature? I guess. It's just like, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, confused. duh. Like, like, but it's also like, if you're a good reader, you could figure it out for yourself. You dispute <laughs> what you think a poem means with your teacher. It's not you. It's you don't the best just like. Feeling, <laughs> you don't just like take everything in necessarily. Yeah, and also like that doesn't make an argument. That doesn't present new information. It's just like, oh, you believe your therapist because your therapist is an expert. Oh, you okay, You believe your teacher. It just makes me. So Gabby Hanna can't think for herself. That's what exactly. It is, right? And this is just one sentence with uh, arbitrary line breaks that don't mean. Anything. Also, so the last poem in this book. Uh, it's called Fin, like F I N, Fin, Fin, French. Fin? Finnish? Oh, fin, okay, Fin, Fin. I thought you said Font. Fin. Like... Did you read this book cover to cover or did you skip around a bit? Did you share it with a friend or a lover? You better not have. Make that bitch buy her own copy. I want a Lamborghini. I bought this used on Amazon so you don't get any of my money today, Gabriella. Wait, so <laughs> she said buy more books so I can get, get a, a car? Get a Lamborghini. <laughs> that yeah. is, even if you're being like, self-aware and like it's just trying to be like funny that's not that's not funny, funny because you have money she's so rich she's so rich i know she can afford to live in los angeles that california wasn't cute or self-aware at all it wasn't even a poem when and she... i bought this used good yes so you gave money to the other person who bought it i gave money is... to like a goodwill in pennsylvania good yeah <laughs> um so that was really rude. Yeah. Um, so let's end this here. Um, yeah, that, there's not much else to say. I think uh, you got the gist. <laughs> Last poem called Link. Link? Link. Okay. In bio. What, that's it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? Link in bio. That's, it's 
It's like she needed to fill up a page. And so she- Oh, I didn't even show you these. Hold on. Dude, imagine- I wanted that, that to be the last one, but there's this whole poem <gasps> about filling up, pa no! filling up a page with filler. It's not cute. I don't like it. Um, good thing I didn't uh, give you any money for this. Oh. On that note, link in bio uh, to Avery's channel. <laughs> and also, I'll put my Etsy if you yes. want to buy some grape earrings from me. They're so cute. Thanks. And they're really light, actually. <clears throat> Comfy. What a- that should be your <laughs> sign off every video. <laughs> I'll Burke. probably make myself throw up. Um, we'll be back some other catch, time. Catch you next time. Yeah. English majors, react! <laughs>